Hey guys, what's up? Steven here from the School Observatory in Edmonton, Alberta. So here we are again, back inside our star adventure. So what am I doing back in here? Well, I am dealing with that tight spot that you get when the clutch is loose. This seems to be a common issue, especially with these newer Skywatcher Star Adventure mounts. And uh, yeah, it doesn't really affect the performance of the mount but it is there and it is annoying when you're trying to balance the thing. So my last video I did, we went over the uh, Star Adventure, tore it apart, gave you guys a good tour of the inside. And the main reason I was tearing into it is because I was getting this metal grinding feeling and also this tight spot. So I honestly thought the tight spot was caused by the metal shavings that were falling in there. We did get those metal shavings out and uh, the tight spot was still there and I said, eh, it just needs to be worn in. It is still there and it's been a few months later and it hasn't gone away. So yeah, we're going back into it and looking at what has caused it, which I have found. And I'm going to correct it by just cleaning up some metal off the one piece that's causing it. So before we get started though, I want to mention something in my last video. I talked about the uh, backlash set screw that's underneath here. And that I thought it was running right directly on the worm gear of the mount. And somebody mentioned in the comments, no, it does, it runs on the cradle that the worm gear sits in and pushes on that. So yes, he was right, I'll admit when I'm wrong. And uh, with that being said, there's something to also mention about our declination backlash setting here. And that is, you can run it in and it'll move the worm gear up, but when you back it off, it does not retract. It is not spring loaded, so you need to physically push it back. So if you can't get your ring gear out, then yes, you're gonna have to back off this screw and then push this cradle down and then your ring gear and clutch plate will slide out together. But when we go to set it up, you need to make sure as you're setting it up, you slowly run the screw in and then make sure you stop where it's gonna be needed. So we'll go over setting up the backlash because yes, I backed mine off and uh, I think I'll just show you guys quickly what I mean here with the backlash set screw. So there you can see the worm gear. And I am just going to run that screw in and move the cradle and the worm gear up. So you see how it moves up? And this is what we're gonna want. But now watch as I back off the screw. It does not retract and you need to physically push it down and out of the way. So yeah, with that out of the way, let's look at what is causing this tight spot in the mount. So I got all my parts here, torn apart out of the mount, for the front part of it at least. And uh, they're laid out and they're also degreased. I cleaned everything up just so I can show you guys everything and work easier in this video for you. So across the top, we got our dovetail, which is held in by the four big screws. We got our clutch ring, which just simply threads off. We got the four screws that hold in the clutch plate and the ring gear with the bearings and compression rings on top of that. And then there's the clutch pad, which actually slides right off of the clutch plate. You gotta be very careful with this clutch pad. Try not to get too much oil on it, especially oil off your fingers, because oil off your fingers is actually one of the more toxic and harder ones to remove. So yeah, get the clutch pad off and out of the way. Be very careful with it, try not to break it. You may actually have to get a small razor blade and just work it off of the back of the plate, but it is not glued on, it is just slid on. So this is the cause of all of our issues, and this is the clutch plate. The clutch plate rides inside our right ascension ring gear. So the pad's normally on there, clutch sits in it like this, and with that outer ring, 
loose, it allows us to rotate our mount freely. Once that ring is tightened in, it'll pull against our ring gear and it makes everything become one gear. So when this is all together and this is screwed in the mount, what's happening is this center hub is actually offset on this plate and it's trying to do this kind of an oscillation effect inside this ring gear. So this ring gear, it is a machine piece of metal. It was done on a lathe, so it is very precise. This clutch plate, on the other hand, is casted metal, which is like molten metal poured into a mold. And when you do that, you don't really get precision, especially when it comes to heating up and cooling. It tends to warp. And uh, yeah, like I said, there's no precision on this, and this is why we're getting this tight spot. I would have really liked to seen this have been a machine piece as well. It just would make sense. So with that being said, I still stand by Star Adventure. It is a great little mount. But the fix for this, you have a few options. You can actually take this to a machine shop. I'm sure they can make you something that is just like this and would be way better. But that would cost you quite a bit. The other option is, well, you can talk to Skywatcher and see if you can get another one that's not warped or offset, but I really don't think that's gonna happen. And what we're gonna do today is actually just sand down our high spot on here, smooth it out, and it should work pretty good. So I had this in the mount, and I've even marked out my high spot using the blue marks here. So I need to sand this area down first, to bring down that high spot. And then I'm gonna put this whole thing onto this little tool that I 3D printed, run it on my drill, and just smooth it all out together so it's nice and round. So I'm just gonna actually show you on the mount itself what this looks like and how I figured out it is this high spot. For one, you can actually tell just by looking at this ring gear, you can see the wear marks on the middle here. They get really thick, especially between my two blue marks. Come on, there we go. And then as we rotate it, you can see the wear marks kind of thinned out. So you do want this to ride kind of snug inside the ring gear. And uh, yeah, because you always got to consider, while this is in here, this is secured to the center of the mount. On the bottom of the ring gear, we got our backlash set screw pushing up on that ring gear. So you really don't want too much play inside the two gears together. Otherwise, your backlash is gonna be a, like a variable. You'll be fine where you set it, and then if you rotate your mount, it'll start to get loose again. So you need to keep this snug. I've measured the outside edges on this. The outside edges are riding perfect. So if anything, I'm happy with the outside edges and I can bring this inside edge down just a little bit and it should be just fine. But you always gotta consider once that clutch is locked in, this essentially becomes one piece. As long as we can keep this center inside the ring gear, we are good. So let's throw this on the mount and I'll show you that high spot. Got a very advanced measuring tool here called a toothpick. I'm just going to tape it to my mount, just touching that inside hub. All right, let's see if I can get you guys a nice close up. All right, so right there, you can see the toothpick is just touching that hub. And now I'm just going to rotate my mount. There's the blue mark, and this is where it's gonna to start to move away. You see that? That is quite a bit of an offset. And there's our other blue mark, and it's just gonna to start to come back. So this is all we're gonna do, is we're gonna work out that high spot, and hopefully by the time we're done, it should ride somewhat evenly inside that ring gear. So 
So let's find that high spot. I'm going to start with some 180 sandpaper. I'm just going to begin to sand this down. I'm going to try to make sure that you don't touch the threads for the actual clutch ring and just stay within that space there. So I'm going to really hit it harder in the middle and then work my way out to either edge or either side I should say. Obviously you're going to want to be sanding more on that middle point and then feather it out. Okay, I'm just going to put this back into the mount and take a look. Let's see how much I've taken off. So yeah, just take your time with it and try not to take off too much metal. I want to be riding nice and evenly. So if that means having to constantly put it on and off, then go ahead and constantly put it on and off. So you can see it still needs to come down quite a bit. But yeah, baby steps and we'll keep working that down. So I think I'm actually gonna hit it with a file now that I actually had another look and seen how it's not taken off too much there. So I'm just gonna Start to file it down a bit. And again, work it from the middle and work your way out. Still needs more. Not as bad. Let's take a look at it with the ring gear in. Let's 
This is where you can really feel it too. And I'm just gonna tighten up the ring gear as well, the backlash on it. So to do that, hold the two together and wiggle it side to side. You can hear it tapping back and forth between the two gears. I need to angle this back a bit. So I'm just gonna keep wiggling it as I run in our backlash screw. And eventually you will lose that play. There it goes. All right, it's gone. So now I'm gonna try to just rotate this in there. There's that tight spot again. So you can actually probably see in here. How the entire ring gear is moving too. This is what I mean by you're gonna end up with a variable backlash. Depending on where you lock in that clutch with this moving the entire ring gear, it's going to depend on what you have for a backlash. But yeah, that high spot's still there, and it's rubbing right up in there. Back into the filings. I'm just going to try to back off my backwash again. And yeah, you notice how when the backlash is off, this is going to spin perfectly fine, but that's actually moving our entire ring gear, and we don't want that. Because if we're lifting our ring gear, we have backlash, our ring gear is going to drop, we don't have backlash. Find the high point, bring up the backlash, it's out, still got a slight high point, it's getting there though. So you'll notice every time I go back into filing it down, I go a little bit farther with how much I'm filing. And that is just to help with the whole feathering out kind of effect that we want here. But yeah, start from the middle, work your way out. Start from the middle, work your way out.
Not as bad, we're getting there. Like I said, it's something you just gotta be patient with and slowly work down. So I think I'm gonna do one more round of filing and then, uh, yeah, I'm gonna put it onto my drill and smooth everything out. So you can see how I feathered it out that my area I've filed now starts here and it ends here. That is over half the circle that I've done. I started here and just every time I went back to filing, I filed more and more around the thing. So again, put my fingers here, find the middle point, you know, work my way out, work my way out this way. All right, so it seems to be riding in there. You still feel that tight spot. But now we're gonna speed up the process and we're gonna clean this mess up. So it may kind of look like a big old mess, but once we actually use our tool here, I'm gonna make this available for you guys to be able to get 3D printed if you want, but you can always find a different way of attaching this to a drill to work like a lathe. So this is just gonna slide right into our clutch plate. It's got four holes in it, so you can put in the big screws and actually secure it to it, but it actually printed so well that it fits snugly on there just by pressing it in. So let's put this on, and then this is actually a hex shape that is the same shape as a screwdriver bit. And we're gonna run this on my drill and clean everything up. Now, if I can get it focused, you can see how it looks like a nice, machined, smooth part. And just blended that high point and the low point all together. So let's try this again in the mount. Still is a little bit of a high spot. That's because we're not working on an actual lathe. But we'll see how it actually runs with the gear back into it. Worst case, you gotta take off more metal. Ooh, just that alone felt nice. See how I got a little bit of backlash in there. Right there. 
Ooh. Smooth. Check my backlash as I'm rotating it. spot. So I'm going to hit it again on the drill adapter. Take some sandpaper, start off with the 180, and change it up to the, is it 320? Hit the 320 against the surface where the clutch sits as well because we kind of hit it with our file. We're just going to clean this up as well. This might be a situation where you should use the uh, <laughs> the screws. <laughs> Lesson learned. Good thing I put those screw holes in it. Okay, again, 320, and we'll clean this all up. I'll even do the outer edge of it as well. This is going to look like a machine part by the time I'm done. Shiny. <sighs> okay, so I had to stop the video because, well, I had to go to work and this was turning out to be a little bit more work than I even expected to clean up this clutch plate. So I finished cleaning it up while it was off the camera and uh, something to note is it made a bloody mess. I got metal shavings everywhere. So if you are going to attempt this, I really suggest that you do it outside or in a garage and not in your house because I got metal shavings up my nose, they're all over the place, it's just on everything. So here's my finished part. It actually looks really good, I'm kind of happy with how it turned out. It looks more like a machined part, unlike the factory one. There you go. So I got out the high spot the best I could. Um, so when I started, I hit it with sandpaper. It really wasn't cutting it. So I started to use a file to work out the high point. That worked out pretty good. But what I found worked even better is my Dremel and a simple sanding barrel disc on the end of your Dremel. And uh, when it came to actually finding my high point, I did show you the whole toothpick method of measuring it out but another method that worked pretty good is I would take a sharpie marker I drew a line along the edge here drew a line along the inner edge as well on the inner part of the hub where the main warp was I put it together adjust in my backlash and actually rotate this within the disc and get it to rub against the outer edge and it would actually rub off the mark the marker to show you where the high spot was so I worked the high spot out the best I could it looks all right 
and uh, yeah so let's assemble this and see how bad it works <laughs> so this will be the grease I'm using it's just super lube multi-purpose synthetic grease I use this on my 3d printers as well so should be all right the grease that uh, Skywatcher used I don't know if it's grease or actually Vaseline but uh, that stuff was rather difficult to get off like I used an automotive parts washer to clean it up and uh, I had issues getting that out of there so I want to put grease in between my clutch plate and the ring gear but I do not want to get it on the pad so let's start with this I'm just gonna rub it around the inner ring here and just spread it on the inner edge you may get some on your pad, that's okay, but just don't be gobbing it all over the thing. The clutch pad is cleanable. Um, you can go to your parts store and you get stuff called brake clean. It's actually for cleaning up the brakes on your vehicle, and it's good to use on the brake pads, and this is essentially all the clutch pad is, is a brake pad. I want some on the outer edge as well. put my pad onto the clutch plate and then ever so carefully put this down onto the pad and there we go and it actually feels nice and tight smooth so while I got this together and try to spread some more grease on it so it can actually work into it as well. So now we want some on our teeth. So you just kind of want to fill in the teeth with grease. That way when the worm gear works its way to it, it's not going to be metal on metal. And something to note, you can never have too much grease. Well, actually, I suppose you could if you're getting it all over your clutch pad, but when it comes to like against the gears and that, don't be afraid. Grease is your friend in this situation. Not only stops metal from wearing, but it keeps everything tight. It fills in that gap of play that you end up getting. Especially in our backlash. So there we go. All the teeth are filled with grease. If I can get this damn camera to focus on it. I'm gonna bring my mount over here. I'm just gonna spread some grease on the worm gear itself. Now I'm just gonna screw in the clutch plate. I'm going to back off the declin, or why do I keep calling this the declination set screw? The backlash set screw. And then I'm going to physically, yeah, physically press back the carriage for the ring gear. I don't know if you can hear this. You can even see it too. When you wiggle it back and forth, you'll actually hear the ring gear tapping in between the gears of the worm gear and that is all we're going to work out but in order to do that we need our clutch locked down so we're going to continue with grease in it there we go 
go. Now we need to grease pack our bearing. So literally, you wanna pack the grease inside to the bearing. This can get messy. There is actually tools for greasing bearings as well, or grease packing bearings. So you're trying to force the grease in between the needle bearings themselves. go. Now I'm just going to really use my fingers. I'm going to work that grease into these bearings. And just roll the bearings in your fingers as you move the grease around. Last but not least, the actual clutch plate. So I'm just going to spread the grease on the surface, or clutch plate. <laughs> The lock ring here. All right, thread on my lock ring. I'm just gonna take a couple screws that hold the dovetail on. I'm gonna thread them into the clutch plate just for something to grab. gets more difficult when your fingers are all greased up. <laughs> so I'm gonna hold this, I'm gonna lock in my clutch. So now my clutch has locked in that clutch plate and the ring gear together. And if I try to wiggle this, there's that backlash. So as we wiggle it, we're gonna tune into our backlash screw, set screw here. And we're gonna keep going until you just get rid of that backlash and that is where you're going to want to stop because it's not like you can back the thing off afterwards. You'll have to physically take this back out, push the carriage back down to back it off. So I'm just giving this like little tiny turns and wiggling it at the same time. Give you guys a decent view of it. Right about there. Our backlash is set. And now the moment of truth. Does it have a tight spot? So loosen off my clutch, rotate it. Oh, smooth as butter. I'm loving it. Now you're gonna wanna give it a couple turns. Rotate it back the other way. And I'm gonna check my backlash again. Just because we're trying to seat the bearing as well. So yeah, there's a little bit of play there. I'm gonna go back into it. Just tune that out. Snap the clutch again. 
I'm liking that. This will actually be way easier to balance. Lock it. Check it. Just give it a little bit more. Beautiful. All right. So, last step. Put our dovetail back on. Or, not dovetail, saddle back on. And there we go. We have our star adventure. Clutch is loose. No tight spot. Clutch is tight. No play. That was a little bit of an extreme repair that was very warped. So if you're not a handy person and if you uh, don't have patience like that and yet you still have the ability to take your mount apart, you can take that clutch plate into a machine shop. And yes, I said they could probably make you one. It would cost you quite a bit. But you could also get them to put it on a lathe and they can clean up that high spot off of there for you. And uh, so basically straighten out your clutch plate. Probably wouldn't cost you too much. Uh, you can even get those hobby lathes. I kind of wish I had one for this situation. It would be perfect. But uh, yeah, other than actually taking a lathe, cleaning it up, or doing it the way I did, the only other option is to say, hey, Skywatcher, my clutch plate is warped. Send me a new one that's not warped. So hopefully this helped you out, hopefully you liked it. I made one hell of a mess doing this, but uh, hey, I got rid of my tight spot on my mount. So thanks for watching and uh, good luck.